This book is called Home for Christmas. It is written and illustrated by Jan Bread. Rollo was a wild troll, a very wild troll, always racing off, his scruffy tail bouncing around behind him. Troll tails will drop off one day, but only if a troll is kind, helpful, and does his chores. Rollo's little sister had lost hers long ago, but Rollo didn't care one bit. He just did whatever he wanted. Rollo never made his bed for Mama Troll. He never chopped wood for Papa Troll. He never helped little sister collect eggs. One morning, when they all asked for his help, Rollo had had enough. No, 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 he whooped, and he grabbed his rucksack, leapt over their heads, and ran toward the mountains. Mama Troll looked at Papa Troll, shook her head sadly. The chances of Rollo losing his tail are mighty slim, she said. Rollo walked along, getting hungry and tired. Where would he spend the night? He spied an owl's nest up in a tree. Hurrah! Rollo shouted. It's up this tree for me. He climbed up and snuggled down among the owlets as Mother Owl looked on. When the little birds opened their mouths wide, Rollo opened his too. Yum! Free food, he thought. Sleepy and full, he dozed off, tucked under Mother Owl's warm, fluffy feathers. No bed to make here, he mumbled. But this lazy life didn't last long. The owlets grew fast and the nests got crowded. They spent hours flapping their wings until the day came for the owlets to fly. Mother Owl glared at Rollo, but he didn't move, so she bumped him out of the nest. Can't you see I don't have wings, Rollo screeched. Rollo shook the feathers out of his hair and strode through the forest, leaping and chasing field mice as he went. He hadn't gone far when he spotted Mother Bear watching her two cubs rolling around and roughhousing in the grass. Rollo dove in, cuffing the clubs and tickling their noses. Mother Bear didn't care. Now she had three naughty creatures to watch over instead of two. That night, Rollo followed the bears to their mossy cave and fell asleep curled up with the bear clubs, mumbling, No wood to cut here. As the days passed, it got harder for Rollo to keep up with the bears. They had tough paws and sharp claws to help them scramble over rocks and climb trees looking for food. Then, at the end of summer, Mother spotted a hive. She opened it up with a big swipe of her paw, and delicious honey gushed out. It had been a long time since Rollo had tasted anything so sweet. He shoved the baby bears aside. Big mistake. The angry bees aimed their stingers at him. Rollo threw himself into a nearby pool and dove under the water. Rollo floated up, the taste of honey still in his mouth. Oh, I wish I had some of little sister's sweet nose print cookies, he thought. Maybe I should go home. But he saw a gang of otters playing on a waterfall. Wait for me, he cried as he scrambled out, threw off his wet clothes, and dove back in to slide down the waterfall. This is the life for me. One morning, Rollo awoke to find a thin skim of ice on the pool. Otter didn't give it any mind, but Rollo could not stop shivering. He put on his clothes, stuffed his boots with moss, waved goodbye, and went on his way. It was snowing when Rollo met up with a new friend who was as wild as he was. Lynx liked to play pounce and hide and seek. So did Rollo. While they were romping in the snow, little sister was at home feeding his hedgehog. Rollo may be gone for now, she said, but we miss him every day. It got colder and colder, but lingonberries froze and food was harder to find. One afternoon, Rollo felt Lynx's eyes staring at him in a hungry way. It was time to move on. The drifts got deeper. Rollo's nose was turning blue when he noticed some moose tracks, big and little. He followed them up the mountain to a meadow where he saw Father Moose, Mother Moose, and their calf standing in the snow. Hi ho, he called and pranced over to them. Rollo made friends right away. He found berries and lichen under the snow where Father Moose had scraped away the ice with his hooves. 
He ate and ate while the moose calf drank some warm milk from Mother Moose. Rollo spent the night with the moose family. The next morning he was so happy to be with them that he jumped up expecting to get a big hug from Mother Moose, just the way his mother hugged him at home. But Mother Moose was not used to a cold, pointy troll nose pushing into her soft, warm nose. She tossed her head and galloped off, leaving Rollo sprawled in the snow. That night, Rollo was riding along on Father Moose's antlers when the antlers began to sway. Oh no, Rollo shouted, holding on tight. Winter is when moose shed their antlers, and he found himself tumbling down, landing in a snowdrift. He was brushing snow out of his eyes when he smelled the smoke from a wood fire. That's coming from my house. He imagined the warm fire inside, the good food, and his soft bed. Most of all, he remembered Mama and Papa's big hugs and little sister laughing at his jokes. He began to sniffle and cry. As Rollo's sobs got louder, the antler began to rock back and forth on the slippery snow. It started sliding down the mountain faster and faster, bouncing over icy boulders and skidding across frozen rivers. It was an antler toboggan. Rollo spotted his little house down in the valley, and his sobs turned to whoops of joy. Rollo's family was on their way home with their Christmas tree when they heard whoops echoing down the mountain. They knew in an instant that Rollo had come home. They rushed to meet him as fast as they could. On Christmas Eve, the troll family gathered to light the holiday candles. Mama, Papa, and little sister looked around proudly at the beds that Rollo had made, the wood he had chopped, and the cookies little sister had baked with the eggs he had gathered. Papa Troll grinned as Rollo leaned forward to light a candle. Have you lost something, Rollo, he asked. Rollo just smiled. I'm home for Christmas, he caroled. For the best Christmas ever, little sister sang. The cat just purred. He had a new toy. After the feast, the troll family sat by the fire. Home for Christmas, all together, singing and telling stories far into the night. The end.